Let's talk about Marks and Spencer because they have recorded a leap in profits and sales for the past six months as food sales surge. Well, it's good news for the retail giant, as earlier this year they announced hundreds of store closures, with the store reporting challenges, including higher interest rates, inflation and even the erratic weather we've been experiencing. Well, joining us now is Liam Halligan, our economics and business editor with On The Money. So, Liam, hello. What are Marks & Spencer doing right at the moment? It's worth saying that Marks & Spencer's... You know, a lot of journalists are interested in Marks & Spencer because it's a very she-she, middle-class place. But for a lot of GB News viewers and listeners, they don't go to Marks & Spencer's because it's expensive uh, and very, you know, you often end up... You get quality, you get what you pay for, but they're not likely to, to shop in Marks & Spencer's. So I'm going to talk about Marks & Spencer's and then I'm going to talk about retail sales across the board okay. because it's two very, very different... Pictures. Let's have a look at Marks and Spencers. I've got a little graphic. I know you like a graphic, Pip. <laughs> so profits at Marks and Spencers, Marks and Sparks, up 56% to 326 million. That's in six months from April to September, and that's compared to the same period in 2022. So a really chunky increase. Total sales are up by 11%. Food sales are up by 15%, even though food's been very, very expensive. And the CEO, Stuart Machin, They've had a big revamp. He says, we're spirits are high for Christmas. So M&S is clearly doing pretty well, but M&S is very much a kind of, you know, mid to up market brand. It is to, you know, everything else what Waitrose is to, to, to food in, in, many, in many ways. So let's have a look at the high street as a whole, though. These figures came out yesterday. And this is, I think, is what's really going on. These numbers are from British Retail Consortium. We can see these on the next graphic. Retail sales in October compared to October 2022 were up 2.5%. So that's a slowdown from 2.7% growth in the year to September. It's below the 4.2% average monthly growth rate over the last 12 months. So you see it's slowing down. Mm. And of course, these numbers don't include inflation, right? So when you've got inflation at 6.7%, the actual what we call real terms value of retail sales is falling mm. and it's, it's, it's falling at an increasing rate. So why is this happening? It's happening because mortgage payments are high. It's happening because fuel prices are still quite high. We had a big spike mm -hmm. in you know, petrol and diesel prices over the summer. It's happening because a lot of people think the economy is going to get worse before it gets better. So you know, you're going to read lots of headlines, lots of broadcasts. Going, it's all fine because M&S, where I do my shopping, <laughs> is doing brilliantly, right? We're GB News. And the reality is, yeah, M&S is doing very well. It's a fantastic store. It's an amazing British business, you know, global brand. So Sh Michael, it used to be in Sh my, my chapeau, chapeau to M&S. But M&S isn't really indicative of what's happening on the British High Street. The British High Street is struggling. But if you're the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of England, if you're the governor of the <clears> Bank <throat> of England, might you not be looking at those broader figures that there's a sort of slowdown in consumer spending and think, our policy's working? This is what interest rate rises were meant to do. People are now spending less money. There's going to be less demand pull mm. inflation as a result. Might mm. this mean that it's less likely we're going to see any more rate rises? This and the much bigger picture numbers, what we call the Purchasing Managers Index surveys, which have now been in negative territory, the economy contracting for three or four months in a row, Tom. The GDP numbers, which have quite literally flatlined, mm. but 0% growth in some recent months. So we have had 14 interest rate rises. Of course, uh, last week the Monetary Policy Committee kept interest rates where they are, as they did the month before, at five and a quarter percent. We've got an inflation number coming out next week, which will go down from 6.7 percent, probably to like 6.1, 6.2. It might even go below six. Getting close to halving. But because, because indeed, because we had the off-gem energy price cap was lowered at the beginning of this month in October. It's an October number. So I do think inflation is coming down, and I do think the Bank of England now, unless there's some kind of whiz-bang, some kind of massive increase in energy prices because of the OPEC energy cartel or because of, you know, a, an escalation of violence, you know, of course we don't want this in the Middle East, then I do think interest rates are going to stay where they are. Mm -hmm. So I do think the next move in interest rates is going to be down. But the big picture here, for all the headlines about M&S, which we applaud, great shop, mm -hmm. it's not true that the British High Street on current 
current form is in for a good Christmas. Wow. Don't know what to say about that. <laughs> We'll pick, we'll pick that up with you next I'd rather be time. miserable, than, yeah. I'd rather be miserable than wrong. We know we, you, we get the facts with you. You don't yeah. sugarcoat yeah. anything, Liam. We thank you for it. Absolutely.